Okay. Next, we are going to go to item 7A, discussion and possible action. With that being said, um, I know there are people here that want to speak on this item and there are commissioners here that want to speak on the item. Chief, I'm going to allow you, if you want to speak first, you're more than welcome to come speak. And then commissioners, you can play it however you want after that. Good evening, Joe Glaska, Chief of Police. I'd like to begin by offering my sincere apologies to anyone I may have offended with previous text messages due to my poor choice of words. Approximately a year and a half ago, I communicated with somebody whom I believe to be a friend. I deeply regret any unprofessional remarks I made about others. It's important to note at the time I had been in the role of chief for about six months and still learning a lot of the nuances of the position. It's worth considering that I was speaking to someone whom I believed I could confide in as they encouraged me to vent to them. However, I now understand the lines can become blurred, especially after spending decades working closely with colleagues, you begin to feel like friends. The hard reality is that they are employees first. As chief, I recognize the expectations of professionalism are high. I take full responsibility for falling short in that regard. I want to clarify that my expressions of frustration were not reflective of my professional decisions. And I never allowed my personal feelings to uh, influence my actions. In fact, despite the incident, I promoted an individual in question and trusted them with important projects such as our peer counseling and critical stress management program. Regarding recent events, it's unfortunate that some individuals have chosen to exploit this situation. I, in, I urge those who are quick to judge to consider the facts before making assumptions. So here are some facts that are not opinions of few to demonstrate the allegation that I have bias against female employees. There is a movement uh, along law enforcement for females in the occupation called 30 and 30, and that's trying to get 30% of female employees uh, in law enforcement by 2030, because currently in the nation, there's 12%. Ashley Moody put an article out that Florida is doing better than that. Um, and she had indicated that uh, she encouraged women to join the, the uh, law enforcement ranks to help Floridians keep Floridians safe. According to the Department of Law Enforcement, uh, the record 7,410 sworn female officers in the state make up 16%. Before my tenure, we were at 17% female employees. During my tenure, we were up to 21% female employees. Out of the 22 officers I've hired since I've been as chief was nine females, which is 41%. Promotions in December 2021 for sergeants, there were six promotions. Three of them were females. That's 50%. In May of 2022, lieutenant's exam, there were five applicants, two female, three male. Another female was promoted. That's 33%. And then in September of 2023, there were two male officers, one female officer, and one male officer was promoted on that one. So the facts and the percentages don't lie that my hiring practice and promotion practice does not have any bias against women. Now to address a broader issue. When I assumed the role of chief of police about two years ago, it was not a seamless transition. I was handed a broken department, broken culture, riddled with issues. Transforming the culture of a police agency is a gradual process that requires time, resources, and support. And unfortunately, despite my repeated requests, I did not receive the necessary assistance I needed to successfully implement the changes I wanted to make. I wanna emphasize that I'm not here for personal gain, but rather because I'm committed to making a positive difference in our community. Despite the challenges and setbacks, I remain steadfast in my determination to effect change. However, I cannot do it alone. I need your support and cooperation to move forward. I believe with your support and willingness to listen to my proposals, we can gradually transform the culture of our police agencies for the better. The decision to continue pressing forward rests with you. But I am hopeful that together 
we can make a lasting impact. What this incident also has showed me uh, throughout the uh, period of time that this has been going on is it outlined a lot more dysfunction that we even realized was there. So there is there is a lot of work to be done. And I'm more than willing, willing and, and ready to continue to try to make the positive changes that I've been trying to make for the two years I've been here. But I was not handed the keys to a brand new Mercedes. I was handed the keys to a lemon from a junkyard. So I'm trying to help reestablish something. This is a step back. And often there's a step back and a step forward when you're trying to make change. But I'm committed to trying to do the best I can, as I always have for the city. Thank you. We have uh, just three lights lit, so we're going to start off with Commissioner Simone. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this situation is very difficult to talk about publicly, but is required by the charter amendment that was passed in 2018, where the commissioners are responsible for hiring and firing the chief of police and also the fire chief. The investigative report has brought severe doubt about the leadership skills of Chief Galaska. Many disturbing character flaws have been brought to light to make delivery of the responsibilities entrusted to a police chief ineffective. The safety of law enforcement personnel, city employees, residents, and businesses are in jeopardy without stable, trusted leadership. The, reputa the reputation of Margate is stained. Rebuilding trust and respect can only be achieved with new leadership. Let's look at facts. <coughs> there was an outside unbiased investigation conducted. It revealed evidence to substantiate a female lieutenant's claims of harassment and hostile work environment. Text messages from the chief violate of conduct and the city's professional conduct and respectful workplace policies. His conduct ultimately creates a potential liability for the city in the future. Text messages raises concern regarding potential gender bias within the Margate Police Department, and again, has a potential of creating future issues for the city. The chief stated that he will never trust 7.7 out of 12 under him. He doesn't trust the people to run the lieutenant's tests makes derogatory statements about others. There is no chain of command with regard to complaints within the department. The investigator stated that if the commission expanded the scope of the investigation, she would, she would confirm the veracity of a statement the chief made to a sergeant texting, and I quote, he had to promote her, unquote. There are three <clears throat> findings of untruthfulness by the chief. One was a video incident where he stated the production crew asked for a male officer. That was confirmed by the production crew to be not true. Number two, text messages to a sergeant relay a different perspective than he answered on a female lieutenant being promoted. <clears throat> Number three, the female lieutenant, according to the chief, was having performance issues. However, her direct supervisor denied such claims. This isn't the first time complaints of a hostile environment and retaliation have surfaced. There were similar complaints when he was interim chief. The investigator recommends an additional investigation be conducted due to potential gender bias within the department. 
Two separate votes of no confidence overwhelmingly passed throughout the command staff and officers. Three reports, all naming chief's involvement in various disconcerting ways. There have been three reports. The training on the city's policies and procedures was August of 2023. The training was entitled Workplace Harassment and Bullying, Managing Threats to a Respectful Work Culture. And the second training was Diversity in the Workplace. At least one text message sent September of 2023 from the chief was just one month after this training. Those were the facts taken from the investigative report. Facts don't lie. In my research, Police Chief Magazine had an article about essential qualities of effective leaders. The Police Chief Magazine listed integrity as an essential attribute, and I quote, the strong morals and honesty demonstrated by a leader with integrity will enforce the ag agency's mission statement and the community's expectations of professional policing. Without integrity, there is little hope for trust and legitimacy to be perceived by the officers or the community, unquote. Traits that have come up consistently in researching the characteristics of a chief must have to be a, a chief must have to be a good leader listed the following. Integrity, ethics, supportive, transparent, inspiring his or her people to achieve, compassion, self-awareness, courage, respect, honesty, accountability, and team building. I have no ill will towards the chief. I had left the running of the department up to the chief. A chief should be a board above, above board in all words and deeds. He sets the standards for others to follow. It is not to say mistakes don't happen, but these behaviors are serious, repetitive patterns. Untruthfulness is a lack of moral character, not a mistake. No excuse on that. I know of many men, not to mention women, who, if the verbiage in the text were about a female family member, they would not sit by idly. Let me ask some serious questions to ponder going forward. Number one, how does the department come back from this with this chief at the helm? Number two, how do you expect there to be unity and trust within the department? Number three, how do we expect our police to have the confidence to continue to put their lives on the line every day when they don't feel supported by each other or the chief? Number four, how do you dismiss the chief violating his own police department standard of conduct and the city's professional conduct and respectful worse workplace policies? Retention is vital to a police department. How many of our officers are or will be actively looking elsewhere should the chief remain? And what does that do to the reputation of our city? If the chief is retained, there is no doubt going forward, there will be a lot of anger and retaliation on many different levels. This resentment will cause safety issues and liability to the city, residents, and businesses. This is a fractured unit. Many of you here tonight, I know, are supporting one person, not the entire police organization. These men and women who sacrifice for us, us each and every day need to know we respect them, their decisions, and they have our support. They are the ones on the front lines with firsthand knowledge. 
The department needs accountability and discipline from a leader they can trust to protect them. Many of our police don't want to come to work. They fear retaliation. They need an environment where they can feel safe and protected. There needs to be an overhaul of the promotion process as a broken system, particularly on the oral exam part. The chief convinced the commission to be allowed to go to the 60% of the grading process on the oral exam. What I did not know at that time is that the oral exam board of how the oral exam board is conducted is made up of the chief and officers he promoted to the title of major. The oral, the oral exam portion needs to be conducted by an outside entity where it is completely unbiased and not subjective from your peers. I cannot and will not support the chief to stay. I hold the title and position of chief in higher esteem and standard. He is accountable to a higher standard. I respect and support the members of the union's recommendation of immediate resignation. The damage is irreparable. We need new leadership. We have a responsibility <laughs> to protect all police officers in the department, all employees, residents, businesses, and the reputation of our city. I have read the city's code, city code of ethical, ethical conduct, and I would like to quote it. All city employees are expected to conduct themselves on and off duty in a manner which does not erode public confidence in the city or bring the city into disrepute. I've read the city employment guide and the guides on bias policing. I would like to pass them out to each of you. I know a lot of you probably have not read them. When I saw them in the report, I took it upon myself <clears throat> to further investigate. Uh, and I have highlighted in here, uh, if you'd like to give it a quick gander, some things that I think are important to this uh, discussion tonight. There's, uh, oh, sorry. I just want to make sure there's enough yeah. for everybody. Should have one on, yes. We should have two different ones on the uh, bias policing. Are these <laughs> yes, I do. And also, I am passing out the City of Margate Employment Guide with the areas on ethical standards, professional conduct. You did say on and off duty, right? I did. Okay. It is in here. If you'd like to see it right here on the very first page. No, I just, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but that's okay. Uh, respectful workplace and technology use and security. And also the last page is an employee acknowledgement form showing that all employees need to read and understand these um, employment guides. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vice Mayor, you're next. Give him my copy. Okay. Two of these put together. They're all different. They're different. Yeah. Um, they're all separate. The yeah, whole that, that's, packet that's right. clipped is one packet. Okay. 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 All right, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> Those of you who know me know I rarely write something down. Today I did. And not speaking for anyone else, I will tell you that over the last week and a half, although I haven't lost a pound, I haven't eaten, I haven't slept, this, this, this for me is a big deal. So I'm going to read you what I wrote so that I say exactly 
what's been going on in my mind for quite a while. Today, regardless of which side you're on of this issue, it's a sad day for the city of Margate, its residents, and its police department. First, we are faced with deciding an appropriate disciplinary action for what was an egregious, thoughtless, and offensive text message, which while an expression of free speech should discuss disgust each and every one of us who has a mother, a sister, a wife, a female child, or a female friend. The chief has just spoken to that, although I told him delaying such an apology for three weeks, in my mind, adds to the outrage. I believe that the city commission will come up with an appropriate discipline action for that. Unfortunately, there's more that needs to be discussed tonight. It goes without saying that when Joseph Galaska was appointed chief, he inherited a department with problems that he was aware of. And although I think we thought that his was a temporary appointment, I didn't believe that the commission, I don't believe that the commission received any complaints that would indicate that many of the old issues still existed. Unfortunately, I now know that that's clearly not true. The text messages uncovered during the independent investigation have opened up a Pandora's box of other systemic and toxic issues within the police department. Since the investigative reports were, were released, I've been contacted by and spoken with both male and female members of our department, each of whom independently relates in instances of cronyism, gender bias, infighting among upper management ranks and a general lack of respect for the chain of command. Many believe that their complaints fell on deaf ears within the department and were not fully investigated. The female officers that asked to meet with me, several of whom have been with the Margate Police Department for more than two decades, said they did so to prevent their female Complaint. They did so to prevent their other, they met with me to prevent other female officers from having the same experience they did and discuss being given less than favorable assignments that their male peers with less experience were not given. They told me of opportunities that they had to work harder for simply because they were women. And one spoke of an instance where a female had to prove she could take the bruises that came along with the job to gain respect. As a female, I realize that these issues are not unique to the Margate Police Department. This is where I live and serve and try and make a difference on the dais. As a female, it's a problem. Chief Kalaska has, been, has had an almost 30 year career with the department, the last two and a half years as chief. I know that he's tried to make a difference, but I also know that the department is broken, that morale is at its lowest, and there is a need for a cultural change that cannot be ignored any longer. I've been told that if there is no change, we may see a mass exodus of over 20% of the young members of the department who have watched the previous chief's regime be replaced by a new regime and believe those of them which make up the majority of the rank and file have been ignored and abandoned. So with this in mind, I also met with Rod Skirvin, president of the PVA union, and I heard him and he heard me. We are all aware that there are no confidence vote conducted by the union members on the letter Mr. Skirvin sent to the commission as a result of that vote. I wanted to know how to make this better for everyone. And I promote, propose the compromise. Those who know me know I always try and do that when I'm up here. I spoke with Chief Galaska last night and discussed this idea with him, and I'm now going to share it with the Commission. I propose that aside from the disciplinary action to be taken regarding the inappropriate text messages, we give the Chief six months to bring meaningful change to his department with our support to weed out the problems that he inherited and inspire confidence among the men and women of this department that stand on their accomplishment and not their friendships. As I've said to the chief, it's lonely at the top for a reason, and he can have no personal friendships among the ranks that he shares his personal feelings with. This is also what I proposed to the union president, and he agreed it was possible. We need to learn from our mistakes and never repeat them. I would like to, first, I, I would also like to ask Mr. Skirvin if, to come up and speak now, but before, 
I look to an end to this with an amicable and palatable solution for all sides and an opportunity to change in the right direction. And one last thing, for those of you who think, I care whether or not I get a union endorsement, let me be very clear, I've never gotten it from them. I've won, I've lost, I've won, I've lost, I've won, I've won. With or without that, this is about my city, the one I live in for the last 40 years. This is not about whether I win or I lose. It's about being able to go to sleep tonight, wake up in the morning, and like what I look at in the window, in the mirror. It's about healing a fracture of this department that goes long and deep and finding some way to do it. Quite frankly, if in six months that isn't done, I vote to bring somebody in from the outside because I can tell you right now, I will never vote to promote from within because that's not systemic change. That's just deepening a chasm we already have. You need somebody who has no alliances, no friendships, and no desire to do anything but make our city better. And with that, if it would not be a problem for you and Mr. Skirvin would like to get up and say something, I would. Can I ask, can I ask you a question? Oh, sure. Um, I didn't have as big a writing as you had. Mine is going to be real quick. You didn't do it at 6.15 before. All right. <laughs> um, before we, I, I think. Man, a few words. That we should suspend the chief for a month without pay. Um, I think we need department-wide in person, as opposed to computer uh, diversity training and harassment training. And the chief needs a letter of discipline in his, in his jacket. Listen, I want to make sure we have an understanding of what he did, the trust he put in others, well, it taught him a lesson. Bob Marley has a line about uh, your best friends can be your worst enemies because they know their se your secrets, so only they can reveal them. Well, this is not friendship. And, um, and I just think when you wait over a year and a half to do something, you're doing it for a reason. So if we can maybe have this break up a little sooner, this conversation, I'm, I'm gonna say a month suspension without pay, department-wide diversity harassment training, a letter of discipline in his jacket, and I'm, and, and, and I'm hoping that a month's pay cut will teach him uh, what I tell people all the time. What are you writing this stuff for? It's going to come back to hit you. You had a bad day, you wrote a bad thing, and, and it's going to come back and hurt you. Are you agreeing with my six months? I'll agree with six months. What, what, my, is, my, what is the six months? I don't understand. To check change. and see if there are changes made. Change. What, what, what is change? A better attitude. What is change? Well, we'll see. You know what? So, I guess it's like, excuse me. I guess it's like um, pornography. You know what? When you see it. <laughs> and and, oh, and I, I think that, and, and I think in six months, well, you know what? I, I get it. I, I think, get it. Okay. You know what changes to me? Yeah. You're hard to follow. I wasn't expecting to have to make an analogy. You're, you're folks. hard. <laughs> That's hard to follow. I change. I think changes recognizing the fact that your friendships change, possibly the people you rely on change, and that you know what? We should not be the last people to know. And I recognize the charter doesn't give us the right to do anything other than hire, fire, and, and discipline. discipline, because the chief works for the city manager. So let me say to the city manager that if this comes to you as it should based on the hierarchy, you sure as heck better tell it to us. Because we shouldn't be sitting here <coughs> having this conversation after the fact or after two and a half years or after two years before that, that I had the pleasure of reading those books. Shouldn't happen. So if it means that during your weekly meetings, you have to say to each department, how's it going? And if you need to talk to me, my door is open because I'd rather you do it than the members of the staff come in. 
And if it means you have to intervene because that is your role, your role, then you do so. But I sure as heck would expect them to be briefed weekly if necessary, daily if, if you have to. Because uh, as much as I will tell every member here who already has my telephone number, it hasn't changed in 40 years, I don't have a problem getting a phone call. And clearly, I don't have a problem keeping people's names anonymous. But if it has to get to me because it didn't get to you to get to me, we have a problem. Do we all understand what I just said? I'm pretty clear, me. And, uh, and so if you would allow him to I, I think Commissioner Osorio would like to speak. OK. Yeah, I was going to ask if maybe the commissioners can speak. And then, okay. I would just like I believe to, he, to speak the, before the union the... rep is here. I believe the investigator is here as well. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Skirber, would you like to come up? Well, I was going to ask. No, after, he was asking yeah, to after. speak first. And I, I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll uphold my comments till I hear from Mr. Skirber. Okay. So, if you have something Sorry. to say, I'm done. Yeah, right okay. now I'm done. Huh. Where do I start? Now, first of all, as Commissioner Simone said, this is not personal. Chief Galaska has worked for the city a long time. He's a resident, and personally, he's a really nice guy. I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to come up and tell you how great he is, and I'm not questioning that at all, like without question. Okay, when I ran the first time and he wasn't chief, he had my signs in his yard when I was running for election. I could easily, easily defend him 100%, but I think I'm trying to do what I believe is right. We usually agree, most of us up here, sometimes we don't. It's not personal against any one of you either. Um, I'm not here to talk about this or that. I'm talking about strictly the facts and what was in the investigation. Um, based on some of the comments I've already heard, I, I hope it's not going the way I think it's gonna go. But if it does go a different direction than what I believe or Commissioner Simone believes, I'm going to respect that decision. I'm going to respect my colleagues. I might not be happy about it, but I'll respect it. And if the chief comes back, and I don't know how he can, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but I'm going to be professional and work with him. I'm a professional in the private sector. I have clients scream and cuss and yell at me. I never lose my composure, and I always conduct myself in a professional manner. Now, if someone cusses at me in the hallway, I'll tell them off too. Like someone confronted me the other night, but professionally, I remain a professional. So chief, if, if you're here, no hard feeling. No, I know I meant whatever the future holds, I, I will continue to work with him in a professional manner. So I'm gonna dive in. First of all, the charter allows us to hire, fire, and suspend. That's something that the residents chose to do. I know you were against it. I wasn't here. I did support the initiative, but I didn't bring that up. It was here before it was voted on when I first got elected. We had a previous police chief. I don't want to mention their name, but they did things that were wrong. These things were from 10 years ago. Forget about two years or a year. These were things were from 10 years ago and they weren't a chief. I'm not dismissing what that person did. They were, they were wrong, but we've got to be consistent. So when I hear comments like, well, these are from two years ago or this, that, or whatever, we had no problem terminating a chief that did things from 10 years ago. So I like to try to be consistent and be, if I'm going to treat that person like that, I'm going to take these issues and treat them similarly. You know, I've heard just from reading comments or things, you know, like there's conspiracy this, conspiracy that, that, you know, the city manager was behind this, or I was behind this, or Commissioner Simone and I were behind that. Commissioner, everyone knows we don't agree on 95% of things. So the day that Commissioner and I, Simone and I conspire on something is probably the day hell freezes over, okay? As far as the age of the text, I hear, well, people held them back for personal gain. Let, let's look at the history of the city, though. Okay, 
we had a firefighter several years back that came forward, had mental problem issues, mental health issues, basically railroaded his career. Can't even be a firefighter anymore. <clears throat> then we had another first responder that developed an alcohol and drug addiction and was actually using drugs on the job. And you know what happened? You wanna know what their reasoning was for not coming forward? Because we railroaded the last person. So yeah, people are scared. They're, they're, they're scared to come forward. And we've got a overwhelming vote of no confidence, which is not easy to do. I know it's easy to throw that term out, but to actually successfully have a vote of no confidence. I mean, I've been here, people have been here longer than me, but I don't think this has ever happened before. This is not something that you could just, oh yeah, uh, vote of no confidence. So they're scared to come forward because even with a vote of no confidence, even with outrage of the department, it seems like it's just gonna fall on deaf ears. I've heard that it's because they didn't get raises or promotions. This has nothing to do with that. If we, whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again? I, was heard, I heard that this was about raises and promotions. Mr. Skirvin will answer that when he comes Yeah, up. no, no, I, I, listen, I'm just, this is what I see online, I hear, I read, okay? So uh, where, where are we at? Raising Yeah, raising promotions. Let's talk about the length of the text. If you read the reports, which I got to be honest, I'm not sure a lot of people in here read this all. Some of these texts were as late as September. The first complaint regarding the chief, and there were some before, but I'm talking about this topic, came in in November, just a month or two later, two months later, to the city manager. Okay, we all knew about it. All right, you can you can speak during public comment, please. Thank you. I was on the chief side. Okay, when this complaint first came in, I said this is just another he said she said I'm tired of the nonsense. And there was consensus because I know Kale asked all of us, and a letter was sent back to that officer rejecting the investigation, said basically saying. You got to come forward with with evidence we're not going to go off a of hearsay. Then in December. The complaint came back with screenshots. We were on break for the winter we came back in January and 5 0 voted to have a third party investigator. It took about a month and a half to do the investigation. So to say like these texts are two years old and this, that, some of them were as late as September and going through the process, this is here, where, where we are now. So to say that they were being held onto for all these years, I, I, I just don't buy it. I've heard conspiracies that, well, the investigators, you know, making it up. The investigator is a lawyer. They're an officer of the court. They're not gonna jeopardize their career and an ethics complaint with the Florida bar to lie about something. And the chief admitted that he, he sent the text. Undeniably, he sent them. I've heard that, <clears throat> I've heard that these texts are taken out of context. So, I'm going to ask the clerk to put some of these messages on the screen. Oh, oh no, listen, this is what it is. We're not going to put this under the rug. So they are graphic. And if anyone does not want to hear it or see it, you can, I'll give you a moment to leave. Okay. It's not wow though. It's, this is something that our chief of police sent undeniably. And I'm not going to just sweep this under the rug. However, you could have redacted the name, because I can't read it from here anyway. You could have redacted the name public, and the this word. Is, this is all public record. Okay. 
okay? And I will apologize to the person sitting here who's going to have to see that again, who lived through it two years ago. Well, then take action now. then and, and, and uh, work, work out a six then month agreement. It's ridiculous. Okay. You know what? The six month was to allow somebody to leave the department. This is no win win, no matter how you do it, but to leave the department attempting to do something that should have been done for a long time and then just plain leave the department. Um, but what are you talking about to do what? what what's he going to do? There's, how about uh, it's time to clean a house? First of all, he can't just clean house. There's union contracts and, and protections. That's why the union might get up and say there are ways to do some of these things because regardless of whether a union member, I would assume there's a certain amount of ethical conscience here. If I'm wrong, Listen, I'll I, hear I, that. I, if I'm th wrong, I'll hear that. I don't want it. Our, our purview is not. And I'm the, sorry to interrupt. It's you. okay. Go ahead. Our purview is not the individual officers. That's not in our authority. Do I believe some of them should be reprimanded and broke policy? There is policy in there that if they are aware of these things, they're supposed to report it. So it doesn't sit and fester. Within a reasonable but that's not that's not something that I have the authority or you or anyone else mm -hmm. up here other than Kale to 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 deal with. So, you know, if the messages aren't going to play, I'll read them. No, it's oh, not on my screen. They were. Oh, they were. <clears throat> back up. I would like them up because I'm not sure that the public, you know, the public sees things like hey, we got to support. Do, do they know what they're supporting when they see these messages? Well, maybe they don't. And you can, you can read them and let us know what we're really talking about. Well, let's see. It, it says, I've heard that these messages are taken out of contact, context. Which one? Well, like for instance, either you sucked someone's D-I-C-K or you did not. LOL, that's pretty funny, but you know it's true. How Is do it you true? Take, how do you take it out of context? Is it true? Listen. Who, who, who are you referring to? And who, who are you referring to? And who is it? I said that I'm not going to disrespect anyone up here. But you're using this. You're using it. This is what the. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Guys, stop. 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 Hold on. Listen. This is real life city business, not what you heard on Facebook or read somewhere. OK, this is what our chief of police wrote in a text message. Maybe he was a friend, but you know what? He's a city employee and he said him while he was chief. OK, so that's one of them. You're talking about using a male over a female to handcuff someone. You're calling another officer a pussy. You're telling in another thread here that so and so and so and so can go suck each other. It's it's disgusting. I don't understand how we're even debating this. If this was any other person, if it was me, y'all up would be dragging me out of here right now, and you know it. And I'm not mad at anyone here. There's people here that have supported me. There's people that I work with, work for, okay? And I'll still respect all of you regardless. Okay? So, but I want everyone to know when they wear that pin or they come in here and wear blue, you want to support the police? Listen to them. You calling out Don't here, you said to listen to our employees. You said it at multiple meetings. Listen to our employees. I wasn't talking about the police. Oh, well, so we could pick and choose? So I, I, I am listening to our employees. Okay. I would like, and I'm not going to make the motion now, but at some point I will. I don't, it's probably not going to go anywhere. I was trying to get a compromise and a voice of reason here. You know, if it was me and I knew I had all the votes, I would terminate with cause. It's easy. It's right here in the investigation reports. There's also a criminal complaint that is with the FDLE and the state attorney. They have it. They're looking at it. So you talk about the chief coming back. I have a feeling, a strong feeling, we're going to be up here again. And it's going to probably be worse. 
And we got another complaint today. At some point, you got to do what's best, as you said, for the city. What's best for the city is for the chief to resign. And he's not going to do it. I'd like to see him, his contract terminated, no cause, 10 weeks. Thank you for your service. I just don't see how the city moves forward when you've got a majority of the department and command staff that don't have confidence in him. Others, I mean, they're, they're, it's not just, I mean, the, the chief of police has to work with other departments. There's other females in this depart in, in this city. And it's just, it's, it's not the right thing. It's just, it, look, I, I'm just speaking what I think is, is the right thing to do. So again, I'm going to respect the wish of the commission and try to work in a professional manner, but I know that I can sleep at night sticking up for the men and women that are sitting up here that put their life on the line for us. And you know what, because they're professionals, they may not be able to clap and cheer and come up here like everyone else. So I feel like I have to be a voice for them. And I'm sure I'll have more things to say or ask as the union and the investigator come up here. I appreciate everyone listening to me. And again, it's I'm just doing what I think is right. And it, this is probably one of the hardest things in five plus years I've been up here that I've had to deal with. I'm sure it's not easy for anyone else. So that's it. Thank you.